Hi friends! Today for our read aloud we have the story A Pocket for Corduroy and the author is Don Freeman. What does an author do? The author writes the words. Good job! And guess what? In this story Don Freeman also is an illustrator. What does an illustrator do? Draws the pictures. Super. Okay, let's look at the front cover of our story. What do you think this book is going to be about? Hmm, think, think, think. Is it about a dinosaur? Or a spaceship? Or could it be about this bear and his pocket? Let's open up and find out. Turning to the first page. Here's our picture. Late one afternoon, summer afternoon, Lisa and her mother took their laundry to the laundromat. As always, on such trips, Lisa carried along her toy bear corduroy. There's Lisa and her bear corduroy and Lisa's mother. These are the characters in our story. They're going to clean their clothes at the laundromat. We're learning about clothes and how to take care of them this week. The laundromat was a very busy place at this hour. Look how many people. Everybody trying to clean their clothes. Now Corduroy, you sit right here and wait for me, Lisa said. I'm going to help with our wash. Corduroy waited patiently. Then he suddenly perked up his ears. Lisa's mother was saying, be sure to take everything out of your pockets, dear Lisa. You don't want your precious things to get all wet and soapy. Hmm, look at Corduroy's face. How do you think he's feeling right now? Hmm. Maybe you're right. Pockets? Said Corduroy to himself. I don't have any pockets. Hmm. He slid off the chair. I must go find something to make a pocket out of, he said. And he began to look around. Corduroy seems sad that he does not have pockets. What do you think he can find to help make a pocket? Hmm. Maybe. First, he came to a pile of fancy towels and washcloths, but nothing was the right size or color. Then, he saw a huge stack of colorful clothes and a laundry bag. There ought to be something in there to make a pocket out of, he said. Without hesitating, he climbed inside the bag, which was filled with pieces of wet laundry. The dampness didn't bother Corduroy in the least. This must be a cave, he said, sighing happily. I've always wanted to live in a dark, cool cave. Then the time came for Lisa to fetch her bear. <gasps> he was gone. Oh, Mommy, she exclaimed. Corduroy isn't here where I left him. I'm sorry, honey, her mother said, but the laundromat will be closing soon and we must be getting home. Oh no, how do you think Lisa's feeling now? I would be worried. Lisa was reluctant to leave without corduroy. But her mother insisted, you can come back tomorrow, she said. I'm sure he will still be there. As they left, 
A young, a young man wearing an artist's beret was taking his wet laundry out of the bag. A very bag Corduroy had discovered. Before he knew it, Corduroy was being tossed together with all of his sheets, shirts, shorts, and slacks. Oh, no. Inside the dryer. But just as the artist was sh shutting the glass door, Corduroy tumbled out onto the floor. How did you get in that bear? How did that bear get in there? How did you get mixed up with all those things? The artist wondered. Hmm. I wonder how he got in there. Poor Corduroy was damp all over. And the least I can do for him is give his overalls a good drying, the man said thoughtfully. He buttoned Corduroy's shoulder strap and put his overalls in the dryer. Corduroy grew dizzy as he watched the clothes spinning around. But the artist became inspired. This would make a wonderful painting, he said, as he took a sketch pad out of his pocket and began drawing the swirling colors. I can hardly wait to get back to my studio. Finally, the dryer stopped whirling and the man gathered up the clothes. Then he helped Corduroy put, on, put his warm, dry over, overalls on. All at once, the manager of the laundromat called, Closing time! Everybody out! Corduroy was gently placed on top of a washing machine. I wonder who that bear belongs to, said the artist as he was leaving. Seems to me he should have his name someplace. He's too fine a fellow to be lost. As soon as the lights were off, Corduroy began his search again. He was surprised to see something white glowing in the dark. Maybe it's snow, he said excitedly. I've always wanted to play in the snow. What do you think this is? Is it a liquid soap or a powder soap? You're right, it's powder soap. He accidentally tipped over the open lid at box and suddenly he was covered with soft, slippery soap flakes. Corduroy began to slip and slide. Oh, what fun, he said with a smile. I've always wanted to ski down a steep mountainside. He landed paws first in an empty laundromat, laundry basket. This must be a cage, he said, peeking through the bars. I've never wanted to live inside a cage like a bear at the zoo. Oh, no. But by now, Corduroy felt drowsy. He was sleepy. And soon he nodded off to go to sleep. Next morning, when the manager came to open the door of the laundromat, there was Lisa waiting. I left something here yesterday, she explained. May I look around? Certainly, said the manager. My customers are always leaving things. Lisa was searching under the chairs and in the back of the washing machines when she heard the manager call her. Is this what you're looking for? Yes, yes it is. He's my best friend, shouted Lisa as she came running. She reached in and picked Corduroy out of the basket. So this is where you've been, you little rascal, she said. It's time to I take you home. Lisa thanked the manager and ran out the door down the street, holding Corduroy tightly in her arms. I thought I told you to wait for me, she said. Why did you wander away? I went looking for a pocket, Corduroy said. Oh, Corduroy, why didn't you tell me you wanted a pocket? Asked Lisa, giving him an affectionate squeeze. A loving hug. That very morning, Lisa sewed a pocket on Corduroy's overalls. And here is a card I've made with your name on it for you to keep tucked inside. She said, I've always wanted a purple pocket with my name tucked inside, said Corduroy. As he and Lisa nuzzled noses. The end. Great job listening to that story, friends. 
Can you tell me one thing that you remember from the story? What happened? Tell someone in your family. Great job listening, everybody. And I will see you next time.